My name is Dr. Jordan Maxwell. I'm a representative of the People's Health Alliance USA Division. This is an organization with the aim to bring back health care to the people. These are trying to be grassroots attempts, and these are trying to redefine health care and how we look at health care. We are trying to not only incorporate allopathic, pharmacological health care, but also energy-based systems, herbologies, and things that represent a different paradigm. I am currently a doctor of Chinese medicine and herbology, as well as a chiropractor. I am here with our guest today, Pam Gregory, who we consider to be an esteemed YouTuber at this point, an author, a teacher, and astrologer. She's fitting perfectly into what we want to do to define health in new terms. Most people look at health from a biological standpoint. However, health does include socio sociology and psychology around this, that astrology fits into pretty well. So that's kind of going to be leading into my first question. How do you see astrology into fitting into this overall health paradigm? Yeah, well, it, if, from the PHA point of view, it is absolutely perfect because Pluto has just re-entered Aquarius on 20th of January, apart from a short dart back into the end of Capricorn, um, 2nd of September to 19th of November, it is fully in Aquarius for 20 years. And so it's moving out of Capricorn, which is to do with centralization, top down structures of control. Um, in the old days with Pluto, Pluto's got a 248 year orbit, but if you go back to previous historical cycles in the 1200s, 1500s, late 1700s, whether it was the um, the autocratic church or the autocratic monarchy, or in today's world, perhaps governments, corporations, institutions that hold power over us, there's been a, this very strong sense of centralization, elitism, um, the rich people telling the poor people what to do, a lot of rules, regulations, control, that is shifting. And it won't happen in a day or a month or, or very, it will be a gradual process. This is a 20 year cycle, but it's going to shift the power back to the people. So it's, it's, it's decentralization. It's moving very much towards um grassroots up no longer top down communities collaborations local networks but networks that also are communicating with each other like mycelium mm. you know mushroom like fungi or tree roots communicate which they do in a, in a forest of course and it's that kind of information network as well as keeping the hubs local and individualized to that local area that is really at the heart of the PHA. And that is why it's so absolutely spot on for the astrology. You know, it couldn't, it couldn't be more accurate for the energy that we're moving into because we know in many countries um, that the, the old health systems are not working. They're crumbling for all kinds of reasons we can talk about. Even in the UK, we've had a very beloved national health service that is free at the point of service. And people have absolutely loved and, and revered that system. But now that's absolutely cracking and crumbling. They can't cope with the volume of people. And it was very difficult to even get an appointment with a doctor all through um, COVID and lockdown, et cetera. So the need at the local level is, is, is much greater than it ever has been. No, understandably so. And I think I can obviously only speak to the U.S. I'm not very well versed in other healthcare systems, but one of the biggest problems in the U.S. that we're coming up across is just the financial interests in healthcare and finances being a huge part of not only a barrier to healthcare, but also an incentive for um, insurance companies and things that we're dealing with here in that power delineation between the two. Is that something that looking astrologically can be seen through astrology of financial um, power over our our systems in general yeah absolutely and it's still part of that that capricorn structure of of control mm -hmm. and big institutions big corporations but with saturn moving through pisces currently until um February 2026, Saturn rules Capricorn, and in Pisces, that will be dissolved. So that is one of the reasons that, you know, one of the many reasons that we're seeing these health systems collapse and crack. And also, I think the um, the power of the pharmaceutical companies will dissolve because of Saturn moving through Pisces. 
But when Pluto's been hovering over those last few degrees of Capricorn, the historical theme has been abuse of power. Mm. Abuse of power, where top-down structures, be it the monarchy or the church or, you know, whatever it was in historical times, where it has not been for the greatest good of the people, or whether there's been some exploitation of the people, abuse of, of the use of power, this is all coming to light right now and needs to as part of the, our, our human evolution. No, absolutely. And, you know, part of this interview series is to kind of demystify some of these topics, especially astrology, because obviously we're both kind of in the world of looking at these things and understanding these things. However, there is a large portion that is kind of just now opening their eyes to these concepts. Um, especially utilizing a traditional medicine system like Chinese medicine, a lot of concepts can be seen as very mystical to people that aren't understanding the language or the concepts behind them. And for example, I'd like to, to start off with talking about how even planets or the solar system, how could these even have any impact or effect on our health? And I'd like to start with something from my understanding and knowing, speaking of how traditional medicine looks at these systems. So for an example, we often see this feminine connection between the moon and femininity in general. And when we look at actually biological health, we see that the menstrual cycle can be kind of seen on this 28 day cycle. So there is this clear connection between the moon and uh, th this feminine energy. Um, and then we take the opposite look at this, the, the yin to the yang, if you will, we see the sun's correlation with masculinity in most traditional healing systems. And at first glance, there isn't really a one-to-one -one correlation there. But if you do understand that some physiology, you'll realize that, believe it or not, the male hormonal cycle is on a day-to-day -day cycle. So it actually rises and falls with the sun as well. And it's even more beautiful to note that the male cycle is also on a larger 365-day cycle. So actually in the summer, testosterone is at the highest and in the winter testosterone is at its lowest. So it is on this larger cycle that the sun takes as well. So there actually is that connection between masculinity and then the solar cycle here as well. Wow. So I'm kind of using that as a segue. And again, we don't need to have these specific of examples, but is there anything planet-wise where you see, let's say, like Mercury is associated with this part of the body or this system? Is there any correlations that most astrologers use for health and astrology? Yeah, absolutely. Great question. Thank you, Jordan. It's going to be so interesting talking to you with all of your modality, your your knowledge about Chinese medicine. Um, there, there are very few specialist medical astrologers in the world, maybe half a dozen, because it's a, it, it's a very, very specialized area. But nevertheless, um, astrologers in general understand the correlations of planets to to the body. Um, so, for instance, the sun in astrology is very linked to the heart. Mm. um and uh, and the moon as you say is very linked to um fem feminine you know f fertility in general for the female um venus rules it's also the signs they rule that are important so for instance venus the planet venus rules two signs it rules taurus which is the throat and the thyroid and it also rules libra which is the kidneys and the lower back mm. you know for, and for instance um, if somebody has a very stressed planet, there are a lot of stressful aspects to it. For instance, my Venus is very stressed. So for many, many years, I had uh, kidney problems and lower back problems. I had a th low thyroid for 20 years, which I've now fixed. I've now cured that. But because that Venus is so, you know, it was so clear, it was so accurate. Um, Aries is very connected to the head. Um, Mars rules Aries very connected to the head. Jupiter is connected to the liver, anger as well, um, the spleen. Saturn very connected to skin, bones and teeth, the structure of the body, the skeleton. So, you know, it's so easy to see somebody who's got a, a stressed Saturn and I can say, have you recently had problems with your teeth or your bones? And how did you know that? That's, you know, that's absolutely amazing. Um, Uranus is very much linked to the nervous system. It's very zuzzy, and we're going to a lot of Iranian energy um, right now. It rules Aquarius, so lots and lots of that energy. That can lead to mental health issues because it's very, it's very high vibe. Um, and then you've got Neptune, which is linked to the immune system overall and the lymph. Uh, Pluto is linked to the sexual organs and the excretory, ex excretory organs as well. And it's so clear in people's charts, if you ask about their health, 
and you just see it on a on a piece of paper in front of you you know and it, it, it eventually it stops blowing your mind after you've seen several thousand of these but um yes it's very very clear and then you get into the emotions linked with um, those organs as well, which is more in your area, Jordan, of expertise. And therefore, you can really help people start to turn their health around because once you make those things conscious rather than unconscious, people can then start to progress through them, have a method of dealing with them. What If they're just unconscious and locked in the body, then there's there's no access point to to improve the health, if that makes sense. No, absolutely. And I, and I think just to kind of pull off a few things you said, especially with the sun being related to the heart, it seems like such an obvious uh, correlation just from the, the physics and the biology of it, you know, the heart running off this electrical system. And of course, this electrical system could then be implicated and affected by something that's emitted large amounts of radiation at every point and is obviously fueling our entire planet. So it does make sense to see that correlation there. Um, and I'm even actually starting to see I know there's quite a bit of solar flares going on at this time because one of the biggest things I'm seeing health-wise right now is people having heart problems they've never experienced in their life. Very, very young people experiencing things like palpitations, just the, the physical sensation of their heart, extremely high blood pressure, extremely low blood pressure. So it's definitely showing up in the physiology right now. And so I can see that maybe the sun being related to the solar flares right now, maybe that's the correlation with that going on. However, is there any, I guess, planets, and let's kind of like narrow it down to this year time frame right now, any planets that are really, really center stage in this moment? And if so, uh, you already kind of gave a brief discussion of what they're correlated to, what are they correlated to? And maybe we can have a little discussion if if I'm seeing that in the people right now. So first yeah. question is what planets might be kind of center stage at this time? Yeah, I would definitely say Uranus. Uranus is absolutely in the spotlight and the sign it rules Aquarius. Mm -hmm. So mental health, huge issues. It's also linked to circulation, mm -hmm. any issues with circulation. But going back to what you were saying um, to the sun, Jordan, I'd just like to pick up on that because, of course, your son, it, everything is connected in the universe, as we know, everything is connected. So it's so interesting that people's son linked to the heart is being affected by the sun out there, you know, the sun that is hurling out these balls of radiation in the form of solar flares. Now, we are in solar cycle 25. These each last, these solar cycles last 11 years. It was expected to peak uh, next year, but because of the intensity, they've pulled, astrophysicists have pulled back the peak to right now, this year, 2024. We are seeing an extraordinary level of solar flares. I mean, if you look back, to, you probably know that the solar flare scale is, is exponential. It's like the rector scale. So you've got C class, then you've got M class, which is 10 times the strength of C class. You've got X class, which is 10 times the strength of M class. So if we go back to 2018, we didn't have a single M class flare the whole year. Now we can have easily a dozen in a day. You know, within the past uh, 48 hours, we've had four X class flares. I mean, just extraordinary. So a lot of people on social media, as you know very well in your practice, are reporting um, arrhythmia, heart palpitations, um, weird heart symptoms. But what we have to do rather than resist these, because we can't put up a kind of lead shield, mm -hmm. they are actually ingredients for our evolution because our bodies are having to assimilate without any rehearsal at very rapid rate these galactic energies that are coming in as new information for us. And somebody coined the phrase on social media yesterday, it was a chap called, to credit him, Jason Estes. He called them stem cells for our soul mm -hmm. because they're ingredients, key ingredients for our evolution. But it's so fast, our physiology is kind of lickety split trying to keep up with this energy because everything is just interconnected. So does that, does that yeah. help? It absolutely does. And then to speak to even the Uranus aspect of things, of course, I mean, it doesn't take an expert or somebody in this to know that mental health is a huge issue right now. And I think the other thing with the, the nervous system component is everyone's nervous system just feels overwhelmed, overtaxed and overstressed. And it's also giving another overlay and in-play into that. And I think something that you said with the almost this like uh, as above, so below, micro, macro level thing here, I think I've almost come to my own conclusions as well as 
almost looking at astrology since we are looking at the cosmos and how they're influencing us and as above so below do you sometimes believe that looking at the cosmos and looking out there is looking at ourself almost at a dna level then if that's that much bigger than us and dna would be that much smaller than us is that kind of how you look at how um the correlation between the two are I, I, absolutely you know when i am looking at a birth chart I'm looking at a picture of, of your psyche, if it's you, Jordan. At the same moment, I'm looking at a picture of the heavens at the moment of your birth. It's inner and outer, the microcosm and the macrocosm. It's, you know, it's a perfect parallel. And in fact, you get Buddhist authors like Paul Levy saying that actually there's no out there, out there. Everything is just internal that we are projecting, which kind of falls out of your ears, I think, as an idea. You know, it takes a while to get used to. But but yes, 100 percent. It's just an echo. It's just a mirror. And so the more we understand the language of astrology, the more it can act as a kind of cosmic weather forecast for what's going on inside us, like, like the health thing. You know, and it, it, it's it, if I see something like a, a Venus, Venus is to do with sweetness, sweetness of, of nature, but sweetness of tooth. And if I see that in hard aspect, difficult aspect to Jupiter, which is the planet of expansion, I'll say, do you have any diabetes in your family? How did you know that? You know, because it's too much sugar. It's too much sweetness, mm -hmm. too much sweetness. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very precise. But so astrology can work as a brilliant um kind of first step diagnostic and then I'd send those people to somebody like you um <laughs> to get a much more informed view yes absolutely no understandably so and that also is a nice good segue into my next question so a lot of the purpose of this interview series and us trying to get out there with speaking about things like this you know we're having a very natural conversation about things that might seem relatively ethereal or hard to grasp for other people. And I, and I think for healthcare providers and practitioners trying to step into this paradigm and into this space, they get a little bit weary about, you know, if, if I'm talking astrology, is that going to ruin my reputation as a medical provider? Or if I'm talking about X, Y, or Z, is that going to kind of contribute to my perception being changed a little bit there? And I know that the discipline that you're in being under astrology is already kind of in that space to begin with. But I do have the question to, to ask you how did you gain the comfortability the the confidence the the ability to talk about these things with such certainty and also without worrying about how your perception might be changed over time and even sometimes you know you've we've spoken or you've spoken about either galactic knowledge or things along these other lines and again these are things that are difficult for people to grasp sometimes what has made you so comfortable and confident in being able to do so Thank you. Great question. I, I think just <laughs> almost 50 years of studying thousands and tens of thousands of charts and also working with world class teachers. I was incredibly blessed in my studies to work with world class teachers. But frankly, I learn every day, you know, 50 years in I'm still, and many lifetimes in of, of working with astrology. I still learn every day. It's very humbling in that sense. I did work in, in business um, at, a, at a, quite a high level in the corporate world for about 35 years. I could not discuss astrology then because, you know, the reason I called my first book, You Don't Really Believe in Astrology, Do You?, is because often at, say, a business lunch or a business dinner, um, the client I was with would be very aware of the work I was doing on, on his business. And clearly they thought I was someone with half a brain who was competent. The moment I started to talk about astrology, I'd be taken over to a corner and in a kind of conspiratorial whisper, you don't really believe in astrology, do you? You know, you can't you can't be a competent person in this area and be a complete wacko in believing. So eventually I left business. I left business and said this is way more important to my life and to help people. Um, and it helps people, I think, in so many ways. And so, yeah, I, I was just done with that. And I think so many of us do, certainly in my generation, did the no brainer. You know, you, yeah. you do what you're it's easy for you to do in business or whatever. But eventually your deeper purpose sort of rings through and you have to follow that. So, yeah, I'm very happy I had that business background because it helps me to kind of think logically and organize my work. But, yeah, I was always going to. I was always going to work with astrology and I stumbled across it when I was 21 and, 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 you know, haven't stopped since. So 
Um, but it is so precise. You know, if I can give you, and I've often quoted this in my videos, but if I can give you such a very specific example, which is global right now. Yeah, absolutely. If I take a previous time, when, and remember, it's got a 248 cycle, this doesn't happen often. When Pluto was in Aquarius, was the, well, as well as the American Revolution, it's the plant of revolution, it was the French Revolution, 1789. And you have this incredibly golden, opulent monarchy of Louis XVI, and you had peasants who couldn't afford to buy bread. So eventually the peasants stormed the Bastille, took down the monarchy, monarch was executed, and from that time on, France became a republic. And within a month, the, which is incredible, the Assemblée Nationale issued something called um, the Declaration of the Rights of Man, which became the foundation for democracy across Europe. So I have been saying in videos for the last couple of years, when Pluto moves into Aquarius, we're going to see this revolutionary energy happening again. What's happening in Europe right now is so, it couldn't be more accurate. And because Uranus is in Taurus, Taurus is linked to farming, the earth, agriculture, the food supplies, what are they rebelling and protesting about? All of those things, the EU policies about agriculture and food. I mean, it just couldn't be more accurate. You know, even I was surprised, thought, wow, that's <laughs> yeah, just an absolute bullseye. So it was just, it's, the scenes look like 1789 all over again. And, and even here in the States, I mean, that's one of our biggest struggles and things going on as well. So, I mean, that's definitely being mirrored here as well. Because yeah, it's in Taurus, it's global, you know, it's cosmic, it's in Taurus. So that is really interesting. So getting a grip on our food supplies to have good quality, organic, natural food is a real biggie. Because with, with Uranus in Taurus, it could go either way. It could go, Taurus leads us back to the traditional, the biodynamic, the organic, doing it like your granddad did. Um, Uranus leads to um, bioengineering and making things efficient and stuff that's factory grown and that leads in a different you know they're not comfortable bedfellows so which are we going to choose absolutely and, and i think that i'm so happy you brought up the title of the book um being you don't really believe in astrology do you because that's something that i do come up across even in the medicine that i utilize with the acupuncture and chinese medicine i actually usually i'm getting the opposite i'm usually actually getting a compliment of oh i actually believe in that and you know I appreciate the sentiment of someone saying something along those lines, but at the same time, it's it's not something you have to believe in. You know, it is it is it is science. It, it is fact, and it is something that can be traceable. Like you say, there's there's a bunch of evidence that's equating to these things. So I do think it's going to take a little bit of time for people to come to these types of conclusion, no matter how much evidence or how much validity we do have to these things. But there definitely is that gap of, for some reason, in our in our psyche and in our understanding of things, it's like well. I believe in it, so it must be real, which obviously there's a true effect of the, the power of placebo and things along these lines, but sometimes at the core, some of these things just are real and are true because they actually work, if that kind of resonates and makes sense. Yeah, and what I'd like to say there, Jordan, is also, it's not, yeah, I agree very much if you believe in it, you know, you're, you're likely to go with it, but it's not something you have to believe in. It's not a philosophy, it's not a religion. It's a language. It's a sacred mathematical geometric language. So it's like saying to somebody, well, do you believe in French or do you believe in German? So, you know, a language isn't something you believe in. It's just something, as you say, that is. It's another way of looking at the world, just like Chinese medicine is. It's another paradigm, another cut through, another modality. But it is not something you have to believe in. It's not a religion, not a philosophy. It's just a language. No, and I and I love that you explained it that way because I did not have the vernacular or the language, ironically enough, to explain it that way, and that's exactly how I feel about it. Um, and, I, and I think this is actually a perfect time to go into that language if you wanted to pull up the chart for what is the PHA. Our establishment always under a little bit less than a year now, um, and kind of talk there. Okay, fantastic. Let me share the screen. Yep. And let me know if you can see that, um, Jordan. Perfect. Okay, ignore my little squiggles here. Um, this is the chart for the PHA, 12th of May, 2023, set up at noon, Monterey, California. I was thrilled when I saw this chart, actually, because <laughs> there's just so much that is right for the time and, and, and right for the PHA. 
And I'm just going to, you know, even if you don't understand astrology and just listening to my explanations as we go through, um, but uh, this is the ascendant, which is the identity of the PHA, which is in Leo. So that suggests it has very strong uh, leadership um, across America. Having said that, however, there's a lot about decentralization with the Aquarian energy, which I'll get into, but nevertheless, a strong presence, strong leadership. And um, it's almost literally laughable that the midheaven, which is your status in the world, you know, your reputation, is in Taurus. And Taurus isn't just the earth and nature. It's the body. It's the physical body. <laughs> you know, and that's so right for, um, for health. Um, the sun, which rules Leo, so this is the ruling planet, is conjunct Uranus. And Uranus is the ruler of Aquarius, as I say. So this is very much to do with um, humanitarianism, um, egalitarianism, service to others. It's very linked to the electrical circuits in the body, something that's your bread and butter, Jordan. Um, you know, very linked to the meridians, that kind of thing. But very, very linked also to um energy and frequency and how we are going to create our health through energy and frequency that is a huge theme for the next 20 years at least how are we going to use energy frequency you know i think it's edgar casey who talked about using um light and sound as medicine going forwards absolutely spot on that is where we're headed and so the the uranus being so close to the sun is re really signaling that as well so this is service to others and that is very much echoed by the moon being in aquarius ruled by uranus so this is almost like a mirror image so again we've got this sense of grassroots up communities collaborations information networks so even though as you're explaining before we um started the call jordan that right across America, of course, the localized PHAs are very decentralized. That is absolutely Aquarian energy. Mm -hmm. It's a network, but each is individualized, depending on the people who start it, who make it up. Each has an individual character, but always it's, it's communities, collaborations, grassroots up, local people coming together in teamwork. There's no leader. There's no top down. We are moving away from Capricorn top down because we've done that to death and it hasn't worked that well, especially not of late. So we are inventing a whole new way of, of operating. And, and it's wonderful here that Pluto has just moved into Aquarius um, for the first time in this particular cycle uh, at zero degrees of, of Aquarius when the PHA was set up. And again, that is echoing all the themes of Aquarius, as I've as I've just spoken. It's very altruistic. It's about service to others, not service to self. Again, Capricorn tends to be in an, in its elitist top down shadow expression, service to self. What can I get out of this profit for me, you know, to pot with the rest of the people, whereas Aquarius is very much about service to others. And it's very interesting that Pluto is here in this sixth house of health and being of practical service to other people. Just to go back to the moon again, any of you know astrology will know that the moon rules cancer, cancer rules the 12th house, and this is the house of being of spiritual service. So one aspect is of practical service, the other aspect is of spiritual service. Mars in cancer here energizes that spiritual service and also has a, a really kind of nurturing, caring, motherly aspect to it as well. Um, Venus is in a beautiful place here. Also in Cancer, this is very caring and empathetic and sympathetic and loving, but it's in the house of idealism and groups. Again, groups, communities, but the ideal that we're carving out for the future. It's also linked to uh, social media, social networks, and again, this, this kind of mycelium um, connection of information. It, it's just so so perfect. Saturn is actually tipping into this eighth house. Neptune is there. The eighth house is um, the house of alternative healing modalities. Mm. So here we go again. It's not allopathic. 
its so-called alternative, but of course that's natural medicine, isn't it? It's not alternative at all, but that's how it's named in, in the chart. So Neptune gives us our energy healing, our intuition, our connection to oneness, to the divine, um, you know, working with, with intuition, um, but very much linking to energy healing. Saturn is, 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 is more practical, um, practical healing. It's things like chiropractic, because it's working with the structure mm -hmm. of the body in that way. Um, craniosacral, I would link to Saturn as well, very Saturnian. Um, so bone, skin, teeth structure. Um, you've also got something which is wonderful, which is um, the North Node is in your own birth chart, is your soul's path of growth in this lifetime. Here it links to the, um, the soul's path of growth collectively for the PHA. And that is meant to be linked to the, the body. Obviously, it's in Taurus, but it also gives a lot of promise and success because it's linked to this midheaven, career, success, reputation. Jupiter is also very close to that as well. Jupiter can give honors and success again. Um, and Jupiter is right at the end of Aries. When it's in Aries, there's a sense of mission. There's a sense of higher consciousness linked to this, a sense of wisdom, a sense of ancient wisdom being used in the healing as well. And also, Mercury means that you're going to really spread your knowledge, you know, far and wide. You're really going to disseminate it as well. Um, this area of the chart is the ninth house, which is to do with the interconnectedness to the universe. This sense of everything is one, because it is, of course, just one consciousness. But I love the fact that Eris, who is the maverick, the outsider, the one who demands that everybody have a voice, demands equality is in that house too because that's what the Aquarius energy is is all about too everybody needs to be heard um the other beautiful thing is this little squiggle down here is the symbol for Homer Homer is a dwarf planet with an almost 300 year orbit and she is in direct aspect to the midheaven the north node and to Jupiter exactly opposite Jupiter and Homer has this beautiful mythology. Um, one part of her mythology is that she, um, well, she's linked to the Hawaiian goddess of fertility. Mm -hmm. And she was said in the myth to be able to birth babies from all over her body, not just the normal places, and regenerate herself from an old crone to a young maiden. So she has this incredible regenerative capacity. And I believe she is very linked to a big aspect of where we're going with health, which is anti-aging and increased longevity through all kinds of alternative healing therapies and modalities. So she's very, very linked to that. She also has an instinctive shamanic connection to the land and to nature. And she was said to have a magic stick, the Makalai, and even if the land had been laid waste, you could summon wild food from the land and, and wild um, seafood from the seas. So she has this incredible kind of purifying regenerative energy but i think because she's now just just shifted into the sign of scorpio i believe it was very interesting when that happened because i actually had my own experience of some um stem cell therapy for my knee at that point i believe that for the next 20 25 years she will be very linked to stem cell mm -hmm. regeneration therapy using our own blood plasma or own stem cells to to regenerate as well, but very linked, I think, to anti-aging and, and longevity. Um, this little squiggle, um, well, actually, the North Node by transit, let me just see if there's anything else to say here. Yeah, I'm sort of going more now just into a couple of transits that are just fabulous for this chart. The North Node, which is our kind of global um, path of destiny, of soul growth, is now exactly by degree conjunct Chiron. Chiron in Aries is where we are wounded in the I am. It's this sense of victim consciousness that many of us have had. I don't fit, I don't have a voice. You know, living in victim consciousness as so many of us have done in our lives, the North Node is now healing that in the process of healing that. And that's very strong over the next few months. And the PHA will play a very big part 
in turning around that victim consciousness. The other amazing thing, amazing thing, um, is that, and oh, by the way, not only the total solar eclipse in Aries on the 8th of April will be conjunct that Chiron, big potential for healing there. That's falling, the eclipse path is falling right across the US. But we've got a very big, also, I mean, April's going to be one of the biggest months of the year, huge month. On the 20th of April, we have a conjunction between the planets Uranus and uh, um, Uranus and Jupiter. Mm -hmm. And they are exactly within two minutes of exactitude on the sun, the chart ruler of this chart. Now, that is going to create major awakening in the mass population major awakening around areas of health, of what's been going on, major awakening to uh, their own health in Taurus, the body, what they need to do to turn around their own health. That is electrifying, incredibly positive. It's to do with freedom. It's to do, as, as a Uranus and, and Aquarius energy always is, it's to do with freedom. It's to do with um, really, really grasping our mastery of energy and frequency in the body and how we can use that to turn our reality around, um, which is just absolutely amazing. And then as we get into sort of mm, mid-year, Jupiter by transit starts to move through this 11th house, which should really start to build your network and your profile across mm -hmm. the country as well. The only tricky thing I see, and it's a global tricky thing, I think, is Saturn by transit will be moving through this eighth house. So that suggests there could be um, increasing uh, bureaucracy, control, rules and regs, surprise, surprise there, around the area of alternative health care. But I think the, the cosmic energies are so strong that we will find a way to navigate that. So, yeah, I was really excited when I saw this chart because it just rang true for what, what you are and where you're going in so many ways. No, absolutely. And there's actually a few things I'd like to touch base on with there then. Yeah. First, first being that my my son is in Leo. So as a Leo, I appreciate you starting there. <laughs> Secondly. <Perfect. laughs> you know what degree? It's so interesting. Do you know what degree? I do not know. Do what's, not. Your, what's your birth date? It's July 31st, 93. Okay, so it'll be around 7, 8 of Leo. Yeah, still. Wow, that's really interesting. Okay. Very interesting. interesting there. And you kind of already touched base on it a tiny bit in the ending there, but I just have another question. And of course, we don't like to focus on the negative or lower expressions, but I have to ask, obviously, just to, to, to help and assist us, is there any true weaknesses that you're seeing? Is there anything that can be co cause conflict or issue? Um, so that can be something we can focus on to kind of keep, keep out of our, our path. I think what I've just mentioned around Saturn moving through this eighth house, you know, more attempted, attempted control and regulation on all so-called alternative healing modalities. Um, it's up to the collective how well that works, frankly, because uh, the the energy, the life force, the astrology is going to a different place. The only um, other thing I would say is that... Um, if we take this particular chart, and this does not apply to the localized hubs, Pluto here aspecting this sort of American um, point of identity for the PHA can give some upheavals or struggles or um, sort of stress around who are we? How have we established ourselves on a national basis? But I don't really think that is such a big deal because, uh, you know, they're going to be growing up very, very locally and individually anyway. So, no, I, I think the chart is is really incredibly positive, actually. Um, and there's a real sense of leadership in this. I mean, you've got Jupiter in and out of sign square to Pluto. That, to me, is a driving leadership for the future into this new golden age of... Um, of understanding health as energy and frequency. Yeah. No, that That's absolutely beautiful. Thank, thank you so much for sharing that. And I, I think that covers all the questions I had specifically on the chart, but that's that's awesome. Shall I stop sharing now, Jordan? Oh, uh, let me double check. Yeah, you're good to stop sharing. Thank you. So that's actually, 
the next thing they want to talk about was I know the eclipse is coming up here in April, and I'm super excited because it's actually crossing directly over my home city. That being said, we're usually a cloudy city, so hopefully we're able to see it out here. We get a nice sunny day to be able to do so. Uh, that being said, what's kind of the the lore around eclipses specifically? What does it typically mean for, I, if it's not health related, what does it typically mean for business or so sociology or things along those lines? What does an eclipse typically mean? Yeah, a total solar eclipse, they're different. Lunar eclipses, solar, solar eclipse is different, but a a total solar eclipse is like a really, really big new moon. So it's like a big new beginning, new start. And in an individual's chart, this can bring um, prominence. You know, uh, it always is like a jump, like a wild card, like something coming out of the blue. It's not linear. It's not gradual. You don't necessarily see it coming. But it's so it's a jump. Um, back for an individual on, onto your path of destiny but for the US because it's so heavily got the US in, in its crosswires is jumping the US back on its path of destiny and so it's a big new beginning in some way now for the US not only did we have that total solar eclipse August 2017 falling northwest southeast across America uh, for the eclipse path you had October the 14th last year falling total solar eclipse northwest southeast across america this one 8th of april total solar eclipse the eclipse path is falling northeast southwest so that's why the crossing point is texas and that's why i've been saying for the last year or so watch texas something big is going to be happening in texas and indeed it is with all the turbulence and breaking away from federal law so called and you know all of that i i actually think it's entirely possible and again i've been saying this for the last two years that texas may actually break away from the union um possibly florida because the chart we work with for the u.s and you think well it's completely bonkers to have a chart for a country <laughs> i know and i thought that too to be honest but the more you know if you work with it for years and years and decades and you watch the transits and how sensitively it responds you think yeah that's spot on so for the u.s the u.s was born essentially 4th of July 1776 Philadelphia 10 past 5 in the afternoon with the signature of the Declaration of Independence that puts Pluto in this second house of the country's chart in in the end of Capricorn this is the very first time since the current inception the current in coming together for the US that Pluto has come back to that same place in the heavens in its orbit that's what's called a Pluto return. It's never happened before in the history of the US. So what is that about? Well, it's a, it's about a real a total reevaluation and transformation of who the US is in terms of its values, second house, its politics and constitution, Capricorn, its its entire makeup of of which states make up the US. And I think the ignition point for this is going to be that that total solar eclipse in April. OK, you know, what is the US right now? What are the values? What does it stand for? Which states are going to be in? Which states are going to be out? Is there going to be a reformulation of what stands for the US? And that will, of course, ricochet down to every system in the country, including the healthcare system. So so. The, the U.S. is in the crosswires, not only because of the Pluto return, which is unique to you as a country, but the total solar eclipse has highlighted we are falling across America as well. Does that make sense? So it's like a jump. It's a jump in. So you could see a jump in. And it may happen slightly later, in, you know, because solar eclipses, you fill them up to a month before and, and then up to six months later doesn't necessarily have to happen on the day at all so it's a broad like a lighthouse it's a broad, broad span of um of influence but there's gonna be some break point some revelation some truth some shock it could even be jordan it could be something galactic or cosmic like a a, a big solar flare we have a, a similar astrology right now to something called the carrington event i don't know if you know about the carrington event it was on the i think first of september uh, 1859 a very basic telegraph system had been set up um at that time and there was a massive solar flare which basically fried the telegraph system which was known as the first internet and the astrology now is very similar the solar flares are peaking like crazy 
it could be, you know, because the last um, solar flares, the X-Class just this week took out radio signals across America, uh, across the Pacific, plus most of AT&T in America. Mm. So it could be, you know, cosmic, galactic, something or others. It's going to be sudden, it's going to be unexpected, it's going to be shocking, it's going to be surprising, but it's one of the ingredients to get the US and, by the way, the rest of the world, because it'll ripple out, to a very different future. And it's going to be part of the necessary breakdown to break through to get to a way better future that so many of us are working on right now. No, and I think that it's, it's so there's a child show I watched growing up where the main characters had the ability to move fire with their mind, right? And there was a point in that where a solar eclipse was coming up and it was going to take away their ability to do that. So they had to actually find other ways to navigate and work the world because their superpower was going to go offline for a little bit. And it's interesting with everything you're speaking, because in that series, when the solar eclipse happens, it actually gives the power back to the people and gives them the ability to realize like, wait, maybe the way we're doing things, the way we're understanding things, the way we're navigating is wrong. So I wonder if the writer of that show had some knowledge of what solar eclipses represent and understand, uh, because that is very much so what happens in that series and it's very much so reflecting everything you're saying there. And it's, and I'm, I'm happy to see parallels as I usually see to some pulp pop culture things. Um, that being said, I know that Pluto and Aquarius are kind of the two big players that we keep speaking of, keep coming up over and over again through our discussion here. So I don't know if you've come across this, this interesting connection there, considering that Pluto is playing such a role in the United States. And it seems like you stated that Pluto has this connection to sexuality and the sexual organs and things along those lines. And you know, that's a, it's a big, to a hot topic kind of here in the United States right now as well. And not only just the aspect of, of sexual identity and sexual orientation, but even there's the, the fact that infertility is up very, very high right now too as well. So it seems like every expression of that Plutonian aspects are kind of being seen in in the in the politics in, in the sociology right now and even um as far as how sexuality let's say this delicately sexuality can get out of control and out of hand seems to also be coming to light as well and now would you say that's a very those are very plutonian aspects coming to light then well, you know, again, this couldn't be more accurate because, as I mentioned earlier, Pluto rules the sexual organs. Um, one of the expressions of Aquarius is androgyny. Mm. Androgyny. And also, it, it in its shadow expression, it can be sterility. Mm. Coldness, cutting off sterility. And so there we have it, you know, so clearly. And... And sometimes I can't anticipate, you know, because I'm not working psychically in that way in terms of understanding the experiences or the, or the specific events, but the symbolism and the timing are crystal clear. And then it happens and, and you say, oh, well, there we go. So, yes, androgyny, uh, reduced fertility, which is happening all over the world and, and linked to sexuality, Pluto. Absolutely. That's Pluto in Aquarius. Yeah. No, absolutely wonderful then to to be able to actually use the language in the way that you're kind of alluding to. Is there, so of course the eclipse is coming up and I know I've seen personally you speak about a few other major events. Is there any other major event coming up this year other than the eclipse that's kind of glaring that we might be able to correlate or relate to? What what other big events are coming up astrology? Yeah, wide. the big, the one of the biggest that's very close is, is that Jupiter Uranus conjunction that I was that I was just uh, mm -hmm. speaking about. Now, um, although this happens every thirteen to fourteen years, it is strengthened because Pluto is in Aquarius, and Aquarius is the sign that Uranus rules. So it's mm -hmm. a, it, it's it's stronger um, in its repeating cycle than it has been for a, a, a very very long time, and this can have many. I'm doing a whole separate video on this because I could talk for days about it. But <laughs> it's it's it, it, it generally it's very positive. It's 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 to do with freedom. It's to do with the future. It's to do with big horizons. It's to do with um, the out there. And by the out there, I mean galactic connections, um, discoveries about our u our, our universe, our cosmos in a way that we've never known before. Every time there's been a prominent Jupiter-Uranus conjunction, we have gone kind of further out in space, as it were. Um, whether it's Copernicus working on his heliocentric theory, 
during the time there was a Jupiter Uranus conjunction. And so all of the out there, the understanding of energy and frequency and how we create our reality because of a better understanding of our cosmos is going to be a, a very big theme. New inventions, new inventions in medicine, science, technology, explosion, absolute explosion around those. If you, you know, if you look at people who are trailblazers, cycle breakers in, in this area, if you look at the chart of um, Steve Jobs or Tim Berners-Lee, um, who set up the World Wide Web, they both have um, Jupiter-Uranus conjunctions. Um, Uranus was the sky god in myth, so he's linked to aviation. Mm -hmm. So again, every time you've had prominent Jupiter-Uranus conjunctions, you've had a jump in, you know, whether it was the first hot air balloon um, launch or whether it was the, it was the, the Wright brothers and, you know, their first flight, whether it was, you know, the first manned flight across the Atlantic, every time there was a Jupiter. The other big theme is um, revolution and awakening. So if, you know, when we had the 1789 revolutions in, in France, there was a Jupiter-Uranus con uh, conjunction in Leo, the sign of royalty. So they took down the king. Um, Jupiter-Uranus is was very prominent in the late 60s, in 1968, 69. You had huge protests of, you know, gay, gay rights, civil rights, black power movement, um, women's liberation, you know, all of the student sit-ins, all of that very Jupiter Uranus um, and so it has so many things I could literally talk for days about it it's generally very exciting it's very forward moving it's big jumps in understanding of our, our cosmos but it can also be linked to these solar flares because Uranus is an unstable energy and they're both in Taurus which is the earth so that's why I did that whole video on unstable geomagnetics it won't be a stable time for the geomagnetic solar flares, etc. But again, they are ingredients for our evolution. So we could see a lot of people awakening and a lot of people rebelling against the old ways, the old systems that are meant to collapse for our, for our evolution. But we could possibly see some dislocation because it's also linked to seismic activity. Um, that's a classic, particularly in Taurus, the Earth for increased seismic activity. So we could see some, you know, earthquakes, volcanoes happening in certain areas. So those are the kind of big and broad themes. No, and really appreciate that. And that's exactly kind of what I was looking for there. And it's it's incredibly encouraging because one thing that I do track quite often is medical research and where we're kind of, because the medicine I'm utilizing, technically speaking, was developed, if not 6,500 years ago. And now looking at how medicine has come so far along and so far back in certain aspects as well. It's been interesting looking at the last 20, 30, 40 years, we've made major leaps and bounds in technology and the internet. Like we, the world looks like a completely different place from even when I was born, let alone, let alone you, you know? And it, it just, it's something that's incredible to me though, is it seems like the medical technology has not been adapting as fast. It hasn't had as many improvements. It seems like we've kind of come to a standstill and become really stagnant there. Even something as simple as life expectancy, and of course there's many factors playing into this, but life expectancy even in a place like the United States is actually decreasing right now, which is just insane to say out loud. And so I think it's very encouraging to think and to know that there are signs that these advancements are coming and are already here, if you will. And it's very encouraging to know that the the health of the future can be looked at through these these energy type of health modalities, these these sound type healing modalities, these these invasive and non-invasive approaches that could be contributing not only to our overall health, but like you said, the longevity, therefore. Because I think we're at the point where we're really we're really into the place where it seems like the next step. It seems like we've kind of hit a place as far as health goes that the only place to go from here is not only optimizing the health that we have, but also increasing that longevity as well. As well. And, it, and it's something that we have to obviously be careful with because that can be taken in many different directions. I, I think it was just yesterday or a few days ago, I saw a study coming out of maybe someplace like Harvard or something along those lines where it said the life expectancy for the current population may be somewhere around 120 years. And then in that title, it was saying that means people can work up until like 115. And everyone's commenting on this thing. It's like, 
what does that us working have to do with any of that, that stat, you know? So it's it's one of those things where, yes, this is great that these are our focuses and these are something we're working on. We also have to be very careful for where we take that then, because if I live a lot longer, there's a lot of other things on my mind that how long I'm going to be able to work. Um, of course, if you love your work, yeah, there's also that aspect of it too. But I think it's incredible all the things you're speaking of, because if anything, it gives hope. And, and I think hope is is very powerful at this time and it can be a really huge catalyst for change. And, and I think it's just something everyone needs to kind of reach that higher octave. Yeah, and also, frankly, Jordan, with AI coming in, uh, there'll be less need for workers. Mm -hmm. That's another aspect of Pluto and Aquarius, AI. And of course, that has to be handled um, correctly as well. Um, but, you know, it, it won't be so necessary for so many of us to work in the traditional sense, particularly if you work in some um, more repetitive kind of job so that will free us up to follow our passions i mean what your work and mine i would say that they are passions it yeah. isn't just i go to work nine to five because i certainly don't work nine to five and i'm sure you don't mm -hmm. either it's a passion of what we want to do it's a sense of and i don't even use the word career anymore because that seems like such an old-fashioned world word it's you know what is your work in the world what is your purpose what is your contribution to to, to the whole What's your service to others? It's that kind of a feeling moving forwards. No, absolutely. When you look at, they say when you take away the need for somebody to just survive, just to get by, just to make ends meet, the human condition typically goes towards wanting to be not only a creative, but service the other and actually want to interact with other humans. So I do think some people get nervous when they say that, you know, there's going to be less jobs or less need for work because we have this such ingrained in our mind of how important that is to our identity. However, once those are taken away, it actually brings us, I think, to a more whole version of what our identity is. And as human nature is, we were meant to be creatives. We were meant to communicate with either our loved ones, our families, our communities, or nature. If humans aren't your thing, I know they're not everybody's. Um, but I do think that it opens us up to a way higher expression of what it is to be human. I think people get a little bit too too based in fear and thinks it's going to take away some of their humanity, but I truly believe it's actually going to bring us even closer to it. Absolutely, and don't go into fear. Stay in love, stay in your heart. You know, if there's one big, big, big thing I want to say in every video, don't go into fear. You're just feeding what you absolutely don't want to see more of. Stay in your heart, stay in love. That is where we are creating new timelines for humanity literally out of the invisible and we're doing that as humanity no absolutely so and on that note i, I don't think there's an even better note to end on so i'm going to kind of keep it at that because that was that was beautifully said um that being said for everyone who might be seeing this that might be new to you and new to me i'd like for you to first start off where can people find you what kind of material are you creating right now yeah, uh, pamgregory.com is my website and you can find all my videos, my um, my teaching videos on that and uh, my my blog. I've been doing a very, very, very long 7,000 word monthly newsletter, but I'm shifting from that to shorter blogs, things that research, you know, research that interests me. Um, YouTube channel is extremely active. I probably put out I don't know, five or six videos um, a month, um, and they're often quite long, like this interview, et cetera. So that is that is super busy. And I'm I'm speaking as I am with you here, Jordan, about very different topics, very interesting topics that are linked to astrology, but also go beyond it to really help people. Mm, what's driven me is how do we create our reality? So how do I help people create their reality to make a more beautiful world for us all? That's that's where I'm headed. No, yeah. thank you very much. And I, I really appreciate this conversation. It's everything I was going to hope for and more. So thank you. Bless you, Jordan. I've loved it and, and love to everybody out there. Thank you for being with us.